This is CBS 46 News at 6. Trouble at the top. The vice president's chief of staff calls it quits after he's indicted on a slew of charges. Local parents are warned to watch out for a predator. His targets, schoolgirls near the bus stop. But first, breaking news. News Chopper 46 live over the Country Club Village apartments in Norcross right now, where Gwinnett County police in the last half hour confirm a man wanted for murder has killed himself. This is a picture of Dontel Barnes. His body is inside those apartments just today. Police in Rockdale County named him the suspect in the disappearance and murder of his wife, Chantel. Her body was found in a Henry County lake on Wednesday. Homicide detectives continue to pour over this scene in Gwinnett County. This is likely the end of what's been a difficult week for Chantel's family. CBS 46's Mike Moore is live in McDonough with more on today's new developments. Mike. Well, today at the time that I talked to the victim's family, they certainly weren't aware that Dante Barnes's body had been discovered dead. However, they did share with me their ordeal as well as a gut-wrenching day. Everybody suspected it was him. I did from the start. My family did, so we're glad the news did come, finally come out. Chris Hogstrom talks about his suspicions of the murder of his sister, Chantel Barnes. Police now suspect her husband, Dontel Barnes, and have now issued a warrant for his arrest. As for the family, it has been a roller coaster day. And we've been together, doing everything together, from going to her office, meeting her coworkers, collecting her belongings. Um, my father's up in Chattanooga right now making funeral arrangements. I'm down here taking care of some of her personal stuff with her estate. And in the days leading through the pouring over evidence at the lake where Barnes's body was discovered, the home she shared with her husband, and Dontel Barnes not showing up for a polygraph, Hogstrom says things just didn't add up. The stuff he described about the situation wasn't my sister. She doesn't leave her cell phone behind. She doesn't leave her ID or purse behind. I'm now, Henry County Police say they have several detectives looking for Dontel Barnes, who they believe is still in Georgia. As for the victim's family, they're seeking peace and comfort, but not just for themselves. The anger has subsided somewhat with me. It's just now I just want to lay my sister to rest and let her go to a good spot where she belongs. This was and as we indicated at the top of the newscast, Dontel Barnes has been discovered dead in Gwinnett County. As for the victim's family, they are headed back to Atlanta from Chattanooga at 7 o'clock. A vigil is scheduled at her Conyers home. Again, that is scheduled for 7 o'clock this evening. That's the story live from Henry County. Mike Moore, CBS 46 News. Mike, thanks. From one domestic murder, perhaps to another, police have a strong suspicion that domestic violence played a role in the murder of a Fulton County teacher, Natasha Brown of Henry County. Ms. Brown was found strangled in her home in Stockbridge. Now, she worked at Creekside High School in Fairburn. Investigators want to talk to Brown's estranged husband, Changa Ola Jones, but can't find him. Police say he may be driving a white Toyota Avalon. We move to Leslie Adams of Gwinnett County, who's been missing since Monday. Her sister and daughter have been frantically searching for her. Police say she had a restraining order against her ex-boyfriend, a man named Billy Joe Cook. Cook is an ex-con. He says he has no idea where this woman is. After 10 months, an unidentified woman has dropped her rape case against DeKalb County CEO Vernon Jones. Jones has always flatly denied the woman's claims as nonsense. At one point, he said the sex was consensual. Today, the district attorney says the woman decided the case was costing her and her family too much to pursue. My opinion actually is irrelevant to this. My decisions must be made based on the evidence and the desires of the, wit of the victim. Uh, we've done that. We somewhat expected this result. Uh, this was not really a surprise. The DA says she will continue to investigate how Jones learned of the allegations before her office released any information. Meanwhile, DeKalb County police are warning parents and teenagers about a man who molested two 15-year-old girls. Police think he's getting more dangerous after trying to kidnap another girl on her way to school. CBS 46's Wendy Saltzman joins us now. And, Wendy, I understand the school's trying to notify parents. Chamblee Middle School did send this alert to parents, warning them in their weekly newsletter that it may be they should be on the lookout for a short and stocky Hispanic male about 30 to 35 years old. This following a third and the most violent assault on a DeKalb student in just two weeks. Now police are saying the abductor may be the same person responsible for two brutal sex attacks in Gwinnett. 
There are either two sexual predators on the loose or two frighteningly similar cases where an attacker has violently targeted and sexually assaulted teenage schoolgirls. The officer was uh, approached from behind by a Hispanic male who, who grabbed her um, and attempted to abduct her. DeKalb police are on the lookout for a Hispanic male who attempted to kidnap a 15-year-old girl near Peachtree Industrial Boulevard and Winters Chapel Road. The female victim was able to pull away from her would-be attacker and she ran to safety to the bus stop. This failed abduction follows two other sexual attacks in the same area where police say the predator attempted to fondle two other 15-year-olds. Our uh, officer found two additional victims that had been or had had similar contact with a, a suspect of similar description. The attacks mimic the violent sexual assaults on two girls in Gwinnett County two weeks ago. Today, Gwinnett police are still looking for this man, who they say could be the same predator. He is a Hispanic male in his 30s, and he is still a wanted man. It's not a matter of trying to scare the public. It's a matter of the public being prepared. DeKalb schools are now sending out letters to parents and warning students about the increasing danger. The letter identifies the man also as a Hispanic male in his 30s, driving an older model four-door car, gray or white, with a red stripe on the side. Oh, I'm always worried, really. DeKalb police are still interviewing witnesses and expect to have a sketch of the man in those attacks soon. That will help police to determine if this is, in fact, the same offender. A Gwinnett spokesperson says that while there are some similarities, there are also some very different distinguishing differences. I'm Wendy Saltzman, CBS 46 News. Wendy, thanks. Well, it has been three months since a tornado ripped through Atlanta Motor Speedway. Take a look. This is what the track looked like, littered with debris. Officials and race fans were hopeful that they could rebuild in time for races, and they were successful. CBS 46's Tony McNary is live in Hampton, where everybody's gearing up for the big race this weekend, huh, Tony? Yes, they are, Rich, and believe it or not, the racetrack is ready. I'm sitting here behind car number 25, sitting behind the wheel. I'm almost ready. The real race is already, and most of all, the fans are ready. Tony Stewart behind the wheel of car number 20, Kurt Busch at the helm of car 97, Dell Earnhardt Jr. steering number 8, and Jeff Gordon in 24. These are just a few fan favorites competing this weekend in the Bass Pro Shops MBNA 500. I didn't think we'd be racing here this weekend. I really didn't. I didn't think they would they would get all the damage repaired in time. These were the last images most people remember. Atlanta Motor Speedway turned into a disaster zone. Well, when I first saw the damage, uh, the first thing came to my mind, like, whoa, you know, how, how could that be? In July, a Category F2 tornado raced through the track. Almost every building on our property was touched in some fashion um, with minor to major damage. And it leveled skyboxes, wrecked condos on the property, tore down one of the scoreboards, and left the track in no condition to race. Today, those boxes are back in the sky, the condos casting shadows, and rubber is the only debris dusting the track. And we are back live out here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. You're looking at those condos. They look almost new. In about an hour, the preliminary trials will get underway here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The only thing that race officials were not able to put back in place was one of the scoreboards, and that is in turn number one. Race officials tell me that will not affect the race, and they expect to have that board back up by March. Reporting live at Atlanta Motor Speedway, Tony McNary, CBS 46 News. Hey, Tony, before you go, I know those things don't have keys. Are you going to push the button and drive that thing, or have you been told specifically do not do that? Well, you know, when I, before I got in here, he took the keys, so I wouldn't <laughs> do that. All right, Tony, be careful. Don't hurt yourself getting out. Well, NASCAR, NASCAR fans who can't get to the track can head down to Centen Centennial Olympic Park right now. It's called Racetown Atlanta. Laura Huckabee is there right now getting the full NASCAR experience. Earlier in the uh, day, she showed us exactly what it was like. Laura, show, are you not going to put any tires and wheels on now, are you? No, I'm at the Home Depot workshop for the kids. While the parents maybe are looking at some of the race cars and stuff for the older kids, the kids can come down here to the Home Depot workshop and put together their own little toolbox. Kids have been down here all afternoon. They're having a great time. And Home Depot's racer is actually in car number 20. His name is Tony Stewart. I thought you'd like to take a look at his car. Not only can you take a look at his car, you can take a photo in his car. Of course, it, it doesn't, much like Tony's vehicle, have the means to get you very far. <laughs> 
but you can look good and take a great picture and have a good memory. Don't forget, you can come down to Rangetown, Atlanta tonight until 8 o'clock. It's getting pretty chilly out here. Or tomorrow from noon until 8. There are activities for everybody, no matter how old you are or how young you are. Hope you can have a great weekend. Laura Huckabee, CBS 46 News. All right. Laura, thanks so much. And we want to go back now to our top story. The man accused of killing his wife was found. He apparently committed suicide. That's right. Harry Samler joins us now live from a Gwinnett County apartment complex with the very latest. Harry. Country Club Village Apartments just off Medlock Bridge Road. Let's go ahead and show you the apartment here. It's still a very active crime scene that we learned about just a short while ago. If you can see, uh, it's the 3200 block here in the apartment complex. A lot of people trying to figure out what's going on. When we got here, we were talking with Gwinnett County Police, and they will not confirm at this time that it is Dontell Barnes. They are still trying to make a positive identification. Uh, I asked the uh, police officer if, in fact, this is his brother's apartment. Uh, he said he believes that it is, but again, they are not willing at this point to confirm that, in fact, that it is Dontell Barnes. We have word, have had word that it was an apparent suicide. Uh, Rockdale, Rockdale County uh, Police are here, and uh, we are waiting to get more information just to find out exactly what happened here. But again, the, uh, uh, the body believed to be of Dontell Barnes who has been missing since his wife disappeared, found here at the Country Club Village Apartments off Medlock Bridge, Medlock Bridge Road in Norcross, and we will have more information for you as it becomes available. Harry, thank you. Still ahead on CBS 46 News at 6. Okay. A top man in the vice president's office resigns after being indicted for perjury. We'll have a live report from Washington where more indictments are possible. And the vice president makes a stop in Georgia, but will Dick Cheney speak about the controversy? And later, the Georgia Bulldogs take on the Florida Gators. We'll have a live report with all those fans down in Jacksonville. And you're looking live at clear skies over downtown Atlanta. Is this a trick or will the treat of nice weather stay with us over the weekend? I'll show you with the complete Storm Tracker 46 forecast coming up. You're watching CBS 46 News, home of Atlanta's only 4 o'clock newscast. After a two-year investigation and frenzied speculation in Washington, the indictments came down today in the CIA leak investigation. The biggest axe fell in the vice president's office as Dick Cheney's top advisor, Louis Scooter Libby, resigns. This after being indicted of obstruction of justice, making false statements, and perjury. Keon Law is live in Washington with this story. Well, Rich and Sine, Scooter Libby, via his attorney, released a statement this evening saying that he had testified to the best of his recollection and when it is all over, believes he will be completely and totally exonerated. A two-year investigation into who blew a CIA agent's cover resulted in the indictment of a top White House official today. Scooter Libby, the vice president's chief of staff, resigned shortly before the charges were announced. The indictment charges one count of obstruction of justice in the federal grand jury two counts of perjury, and two counts of false statements. 
Libby is accused of lying to FBI agents and lying under oath to the grand jury. The investigation was sparked by the leak of CIA operative Valerie Plame's name to reporters. Her husband is former Ambassador Joseph Wilson. His attorney read a statement from Wilson. I continue to believe that revealing my wife Valerie's secret CIA identity was very wrong and harmful to our nation. President Bush praised Libby for his tireless work as a public servant. Special Counsel Fitzgerald's investigation and ongoing legal proceedings are serious. In our system, each individual is presumed innocent and entitled to due process and a fair trial. Ducking indictment, at least for now, the president's top political strategist, Karl Rove. I'm going to have a great Friday and a fantastic weekend. Hope you do good. Rove may still be under investigation. The special counsel is saying the bulk, but not all of this investigation, is over. Live in Washington, I'm Kyung Law, CBS 46 News. Back to you, Rich and Sine. Kyung, thanks so much. A CBS News special report on today's indictment preempted the final seven minutes of As the World Turns. If you're wondering what you missed, you can catch the conclusion of that show on our website, cbs46.com. Meanwhile today, Vice President Dick Cheney chose not to address the controversy while visiting Savannah. Cheney gave stump speeches for two congressional candidates and then met Good with afternoon. troops at Warner Robins Air Great Force Base. The vice president did speak about President Great Bush's commitment to finding a new candidate for the Supreme welcome. Court. Rosa Parks will join presidents and war heroes who have been honored in death with a public viewing in the Capitol Rotunda in Washington. Congress approved the measure th last night, making her the first woman to get such an honor. Citizens will be allowed to pay their final respects to the seamstress whose act of defiance on a public bus a half century ago helped spark the civil rights movement. Rosa Parks died Monday in Detroit. She was 92. You're watching CBS 46 News. We'll be right back. Now, Storm Tracker 46 weather in your neighborhood with First Track 3D radar. And we start tonight with a reminder that there's something exciting to see in the eastern sky tonight and tomorrow night. It's the Mars, the planet. It'll appear as a yellowish dot in the eastern sky. That's tonight and uh, on into tomorrow. Look there after 9 o'clock and you should be able to skip, see it because the skies will be clear and there isn't much of a moon to pollute our sky or to make it hard to see that. Right now, it's a great end to a fantastic day. Our temperatures 59 degrees in Gainesville, 59 over in Athens, 62 in downtown Atlanta. So in about a half an hour, we'll lose the sun and temperatures will really begin to drop. 61 in Chambly, 63 in Mableton, 61 over in Stone Mountain. And a reminder that the tour of Southern Ghost continues at Stone Mountain Park. If you're heading there tonight between 7 and 9.30, you can expect clear skies. It'll be cool for a ghostly good time 
a lot of fun out at Stone Mountain. Let's take a live look at the mountain right now. It looks great. As we said, clear skies. Another live look across Peachtree Towers downtown. It's sunny, mild and dry, and this is the kind of weather that you can expect for the rest of the weekend. In fact, by Sunday and Monday, it'll even be a little bit warmer, so no real problems for any activities you have going outside. There is a problem, of course, down off the coast of Nicaragua. It's because Tropical Storm Beta continues to churn there with 65 mile an hour winds. May intensify to a hurricane, and some computer models are trying to drag it to the north instead of bringing it along the coast, so it's something that we'll have to continue to watch. On the Storm Tracker 46, weather in your neighborhood. Again, skies are clear tonight. There's a bit of a frost possible in many neighborhoods, especially around Atlanta by morning. By 8 o'clock, temperatures down to 53, by 11 down to 50. And again, frosty conditions in the suburbs, but that'll all be gone once the sun comes out. Temperatures will quickly, quickly warm. By noon, we're back up to near 60 degrees. It'll be an absolutely delightful day for anything you have planned outdoors, and we should top out with a high of 65 with a lot of bright sunshine. As for the game down in Jacksonville, Florida, and the Bulldogs tangle at 3.30. You can see that game right here on CBS 46. Kickoff temperature ought to be 68 degrees with plenty of sunshine, so no problems for that game. And on the Storm Tracker 46 seven-day forecast, don't forget tomorrow night we're going to turn the clocks back so we can get rid of daylight savings time. Monday, of course, is Halloween. Temperatures should top out around 71, so no real problems there. And as we head into the middle of next week and on into uh, Thursday, we could see a couple of scattered showers where you can follow the mild weather right from your home computer. Go to our website, cbs46.com. Download the free software, Instant Weather, brought to us by Scanner Energy. Each Friday, we give away a free totes umbrella to viewers who got instant weather. And this hour's winner is Amber Prater. Congratulations to Amber, and we'll announce another winner tonight at 11. Still ahead on CBS 46 News at 6. I'm Gil Tyree here in Jacksonville. The dogs get ready to tangle with the Gators. A game preview coming up. Man, uh, Ben Stiller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was pretty funny. It's, it's on HBO right now, like every day. I'm getting tired of it. You ever notice Stiller plays the same?
Now, CBS 46 Sports. With Gil Tyree, we bring you greetings from Jacksonville, where tomorrow it will be a big game here on CBS 46, the rivalry on the river. The Georgia Bulldogs against the Florida Gators, and I'll tell you what, the dogs arrived here at their team hotel about 4.10 this afternoon for tomorrow's game, and it is huge, especially for a guy with the initials of JT. I felt like this day would come. I didn't feel like it would come this quickly or in this, this way. I didn't feel like it might come this season, maybe next, maybe next season. And that day has come for Joe Tereshinsky. Unfortunately, it was at DJ Shockley's expense. Saturday's game against the Gators is without question the biggest in his college career. I'll be sure I'll, I'll be happy talking to him in this game. Uh, Coach has been doing a great job of trying to get us prepared and but I think the main focus is that everyone needs to do their own job. For this third generation Bulldog, it's a chance to continue a storied family legacy. Number 13 is filling the big shoes left by his grandfather, then father. Being third generation, being, being here with my, from my family and knowing that they've been doing the same things that, that I'm going through now, it, it actually it, it puts a lot of confidence in me also. Humble? Quiet and confident, Joe T3, as he is nicknamed, has been given the keys to the Georgia Bulldog car. His teammates and head coach have complete faith in him. Joe's a veteran. He knows the offense. He's been around for a while. You know, uh, and I have full confidence in Joe. You know, we're gonna do the best we can, especially run the ball wide, try to take pressure off him, and uh, make his job a lot easier. No matter what Joe does, uh, I just got a lot of admiration for him and the way he works for us and how much he loves this program. And I know that he's going to do the very best he can do. All right, that's the story here in Jacksonville, of course, Florida and Georgia, but there's a big race going on in Atlanta, and it will be the MBNA 500, the Bass Pro Shops, and that's where we find our Mark Harmon. Mark? I'm here at Centennial Olympic Park at Racetown, Atlanta. The King Richard Petty just got done signing some autographs. Everybody here talking about the big NASCAR race at the Atlanta Motor Speedway this coming Sunday. Now, the track was a busy place today. Everybody getting in the last kind of workout, trying to get the bugs out of the system, last minute adjustments to their cars. Friday, of course, qualifying day. Tonight, they go under the lights at 8 p.m. The drivers seem to like this track, hold some great memories for the spring race winner, number 99, Carl Edwards. I'm really excited to go back to Atlanta. I'm glad Atlanta, Atlanta Motor Speedway is one of the races in the chase. I mean, that was the greatest, greatest weekend, you know, a guy could have is winning those cup races, or the, the Bush race and the cup race that same weekend, and I can't wait to go to Atlanta. Like I said, qualifying starts tonight at 8 o'clock under the lights. Ryan Newman has won the last five consecutive polls. He'll be the favorite. Let's send it from downtown Atlanta right back to the river in Jacksonville to Gil Tyree. Gil? All right, Mark, thank you. Now some more football, the NFL variety. There are nominees for the 2006 NFL Hall of Fame class have come out. Let's check them. And some familiar names, Herschel Walker, Chris Hinton, Claude Humphrey, Cornelius Bennett, Jesse Tuggle, and of course, Dan Reeves. We wish them all the very, very best. That's going to put a wrap here at Jacksonville. We'll hear more from the dogs coming up at 11 o'clock tonight. Now back to our studios in Atlanta. Well, we want to update you now on our lead story, the suicide of accused killer Dontel Barnes. Police and Gwinnett have now confirmed that the body found at the Country Club Apartments a short time ago is Dontel Barnes. He apparently went to his brother's apartment and killed himself. His brother then called police. We're going to have much more on this bizarre story tonight on CBS 46 News at 11. Have a great evening. The CBS Evening News is coming up next. Thank you for watching CBS 46 News at 6. Join us tonight for CBS 46 News at 11 for the latest in news, weather, and sports. Now at 11 on CBS.